this little whippersnapper smells like crap because she just decided to puke. So yeah, what a great start to the morning for us. Well, it's not really morning anymore. It's 12, 15 or so. And I'm just heading up to the farm. I had to work till 11.30ish. Uh, -ish. So we're gonna get up there. But first off, I wanna stop in and check on my field because I had the uh, tile man out yesterday. And they did quite a bit of work on it. Apparently we found quite a bit of issues with my new farm. So let's uh, go take a look, see what, see what all we found. And then with any luck, this will be the last time you guys don't see corn in my field. With all luck, we're gonna get this field planted here this afternoon, actually this evening probably. Let's go take a look. So if you guys remember in this video, which was yesterday's, I came out here and explained a little bit about what was wrong and everything like that. Well, what my theory was proved to be exactly right. We had some tile issues, some drainage issues. Let's go, puke and McPuke. Come on. You can get out. There you go. So as I was saying in the previous video, this stuff was all sitting sopping wet. Like there's standing water, there's water flowing, all that fun stuff. Well, as you can see, it's dried up for the most part. A little bit wet in a couple spots, but I think she'll buck for today at least. So like, uh, like we were saying, there are two parts of this tile that was crushed. We have drainage tile that essentially drain this low spot. What that is is subsurface. It's a plastic pipe that just takes uh, subsurface drainage, subsurface tile, and brings it to the creek. Well, over here it was crushed. The previous owner essentially uh, crushed it when he was dumping this concrete. There you can kind of see that's what the that's what the drainage tile looks like that is perforated that actually is plastic once you go up the little ways they had to splice around it but essentially what it does is it goes right through here and just takes excess moisture out so that's great it's draining but what we need to do is we need to reinforce it because this will wash once we get a big rain so at some point you need to come in here move the cement back and put a lot of dirt around it to essentially hold this soil in but it's draining that's the main part neighbor right there actually has a uh, electric dog fence that we had to cut through that's this so we'll get that taken care of at some point as well but yeah so it was crushed by the concrete over there but also it was broken over here as well we're not sure how this got broken because that's pretty easy to tell we crushed concrete on that or the old owner did but right here the clay tile got crushed as well so this is what it is this is what it was underneath clay tile just lets water in and then transports it out well when your clay tile is crushed like that it doesn't do much the water just sits so i believe what he did was he just ran two lines actually i'm not even sure what he did i'll have to ask him but i can tell that he ran a line right here it drains it and he ran a line right there eventually that just takes like i said the excess water over to the creek i don't know it's beyond me all i can tell is there's just shards of clay tile everywhere so there was something wrong so it's definitely a little bit wetter still here still but hopefully that'll drain give it all day today and it should drain nicely we hope at least because like i said pat's hopefully gonna be planting this this evening what do you think Doug? here's an old chunk of tile nice it is 12.30, Grandma's expecting me. Let's get moving. Just wanna stick this thing over there though. That was kinda neat. And you stink, dog. To Grandma's we go. There's Nathan on the side of those trees there slamming in the soybeans. Just made it up to the Bellevue farm after a delicious dinner from Grandma. So now I need to get the sprayer going. It's long past time to get done up here, get back down south and keep rolling and get caught back up the planter because pat has really been slamming the acres in and it's uh he's been beating me so i need to get caught back up he's been beating me so i need to get caught back up last time but I think we'll be all right I'm on a downhill slope so I'm not gonna worry about it too much let's fire up and then load the thing up you can really hear him moving like a dream 
start loading the sprayer up get all my stuff in here so i'm gonna let the sprayer warm up for a little bit been running for about four or five minutes now I'll go for a couple more, more couple more minutes walk down here see how that guy's doing looks like he's doing pretty decent on the long rows Dude, he's almost got this field whipped. Nothing like corn dog and meat dog or bean dog, whatever you want to call it. So he took my dad's pickup up this uh, morning, brought seed up with him. He should hopefully have enough seed to get it finished up here. He's got the back hopper still full. So we'll see how much he can get done, but cross the fingers. He'll get finished up here at Belvy tonight and get moved home. She should be warmed up nice and warm by now. Let's head back, head to Andrew, finish up that farm, because it's got, that corn's probably well up by now. Then we'll head to uh, the bottom here. That was a little too wet for yesterday. Finish that, and then we'll finish up with my field. Then we'll head back to the Preston farm. Come on, Daisy. It's getting a little breezy, but it's not too bad. Got a chance of rain tonight, so we got to push hard to get caught back up. Rolling. Oil's not near warmed up yet, so I'm just going to take your easy go to that 24, 25 mile an hour for a little while. Cows are out in the pasture. Oh, Budley actually mowed around the pasture too. Nice. Good job, Budley. So if he doesn't get that mowed, we'll typically get some pink eye. What's that west? Got corn dog with me supervising. It's going to be a horrible day. Huh. Seems just like yesterday when they were cutting this field. Weird. It's because it was yesterday. You know, but it's not getting off. She wants to eat my owner's manual. I might look at that in the next 10 years. Y y you get it? Because they did just cut, rake, and chop that yesterday. <laughs> I'm driving. Hey, you, I'm driving. Well, I'm up here at the Andrew Farm, and this is what i love to see but i don't at the same time this corn is up and up nicely it's at v2 basically there's two leaves out there so while i wait for my emergence to pull in you can kind of see them all at nine inches i need to get down to one so what's got let's hop out what do you think corn dog want to go run around for a little bit let's go this is what i don't love a lot of weeds coming up Man, I wish I would have been out here sooner. See all these suckers? Water hemp, water hemp, water hemp. Lamb's quarter, water hemp, water hemp. And that's just at a foot by foot square. So, like I said, ideally this would have gotten sprayed a week and a half ago right after we planted it, but that just wasn't in the cards. So, driving over this won't kill this corn, but it'll definitely stunt it. Luckily, I only have about probably 25, 30 acres of spray here, so it won't take long. And I won't run over the whole field, but I'll run over some, that's for sure. Well, that's unfortunate, I should say. Suppose, what do you do? What do you think, corn dog? She's just chilling. Good job, Daisy. Good job. Good job, floofball. I did some troubleshooting. I'm still waiting for this thing to pull in. It's only at six inches now, which is stupid. So I did some troubleshooting on the outer harness. I can't remember if I told you guys to check out the last video, but you guys really should because uh, yeah, I hit a tree and the, that outer sensor quit working. So I have boom height sensors on this thing. I have two on each side and one in the center. The outer side one quit. So I mean, I can still work. I can still use the inside three, but that kind of sucks because I really got to pay attention more, but at least I can still run. So, but I think it's a harness issue. I saw, I pulled the harness apart and I saw some grounding and then it was a pushback pin. So I think if I redo that harness, we'll be able to get, be able to get back and go and get your butt back there. But I, I don't know, I can't sit here any longer. I've been sitting here for 15 minutes. Why this is still only at six inches is ridiculous. Like I understand why I lost signal going underneath those trees, but yeah, like, come on. I've been up here in the middle of nowhere for 15 minutes, but time to roll. What do you think, Daisy? Let's go, let's go, oh yeah. Oh, I did you. It's kind of hard for you guys to tell, but right here was the cutoff of where I sprayed and where I didn't last time. And I can plain as day tell, this side is clear because it's got that residual herbicide down. Right here, water hemp has started. So that's why this stuff needs to get sprayed ASAP. 
So let's roll. You're doing no good job there, pups. You're doing a good job. Oh, that's probably way too cold for you. All right, I got a vent blowing right on her. So we're just cruising along 15 mile an hour across the hilltop. 185 instant acres an hour productivity. Obviously I can't do near that. I could probably do 50 average. Just act when you factor in all the turn around and jagged field edges we got. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. But we're laying a blanket residual down. That's all that matters. Well, I'm following my tracks I was in earlier, like about a week ago. And I could definitely tell that the corn was stunted a little. But it wasn't bad. What I mean by that is I can just tell where my wheel tracks are. The emergence isn't quite as good, which I guess you'll have that when you have, uh, you're passing over, you're running over corn at this stage. It's, like I said, it's not gonna kill it. We'll still get plants where these big fat tires are running across, but it just won't be near as good. It is what it is. It's kind of why I'm running at an angle as much as possible. If I run with the rows, I will literally be running over plants 100% of the time. When I'm going at an angle, it's probably only 60% of the time when I'm actually crossing them. So that's why I'm try, excuse me, trying to go at an angle. Cows! And be else like me that feel like they have to announce anytime they see cows, especially when their wives or significant others around. I do. Hi, DZ. Oh, you want that? There you go. Got the engine farm done. Glad I got it done. I'd have a little more damage than I would have liked, but it is what it is. So now I'm gonna move on to the Bellevue farm and then head to my farm and then head south. Should be back in Preston in about an hour and a half, I would guess. Hopefully. Bald Eagles! Heck yeah! Oh, that is sweet. And I'm just overhanging the uh, fence a little ways, trying to kill off any of those weasel on the fence. Oh, spray in the wet part. Don't want to drive right through that, so I'm just going to spray around it. This pad even made ruts. Just about done. Trying to keep that fence nice and clean. So I hope at least. Done with the outside round, I should say. Definitely not done with the field. So the bad thing about this field is around the outside near that creek, we have a really nasty weed called cucumber. And what cucumber is, it's just like in your garden. If any of you guys have ever planted cucumbers before, cucumbers are a vine and they're a very invasive. They basically run and they latch onto anything and they climb and they just destroy. So it's the same thing like the weed, like the wild cucumber. It's, it's gnarly. This field's bad. Luckily we have a pasture on the outside where we can spray it all, but still it's I went a little heavier on the outside pass just to try and keep the weeds at bay because it's, that stuff can get nasty. Anyone else have those fields where you literally make one outside round and you're half done with the field? Yep, those are so fun. So fun, just like that. Bellevue and Andrew are sprayed. I just got my five acre piece on the way home and we'll be done. That corn is popping up nicely. Probably already past VE up to V1. Neighbor out planting. So he's an organic farmer. Real nice guy. Dave, I hope you have good luck this year. Plants with a sick 1086. Oh, there he is out walking. Well, I went back to a good seat or something. Have a good year, Dave. What better time to drive through town right when school's getting out? Yay, good timing, Ron. I'd rather just, you know, not take a chance. I'm just gonna sit here and wait because all these buses are going to the high school. Yeah, I remember riding these buses. Fun, fun, fun. Just not take a chance with kids because I'm pretty wide going through town. I'm easily straddling the grit yellow line. Well, here's my cornfield. Sweet. Let's get this sucker sprayed. What do you think, Daisy Girl? This is your cornfield. So one thing I've been noticing is some spots, we have open trenches. This you don't want because that means the seed did not close. The seed for all. So I'm guessing this was too wet when we planted it, which I can already tell you it was. 
how clumpy it is. But luckily we got a real good rain on it, so that definitely helped. So let's uh, go do some digging. Go outside. Let's do some digging, see if we can find some of my corn. You gonna help me dig? She's shooting up. That should be out of the ground in two days. See why we call her corn dog? That good? Yeah, I bet this stuff will be out of the ground in probably two, three days. <laughs> what? I just realized I just sprayed this. I probably shouldn't let her uh, come be. Daisy, come on. Probably shouldn't let her be eating anything. Whoops. Daisy, let's go. I don't want you to die. So I see flashing red lights where I got to fill up my tender. So either somebody got pulled over there or there's a fire. Either one is not good. Um, I'm definitely, yeah, there's, oh geez, there's multiple cops there. Oh wow. Yeah, I definitely can't pull in there. I'm gonna have to pull into the farm. So I have no clue what's going on there. I'm guessing uh, some sort of dis domestic disturbance if they got multiple cops there and there's no fire. So not good regardless. So I'm just gonna fiddle fart around here for a little bit, load up some chemical and fill up the fuel. You guys all right? I think you're good. Walk it off. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, there's two cops at the rental house, the neighbors that are at this rental house. School bus is there because I'm guessing they just dropped off the kids. But I'm not sure what's going on. My aunt thought that my aunt was told by my other aunt who was told by the cops that they were called there because there's a guy with a gun. I don't know what's going on, but I can't go over there and fill up my sprayer. So I'm going to mess with some chemicals, I suppose, until I can get in there. What a weird situation. Looks like they're just writing a report right now. Both cops are there. I need to keep spraying because I, I'm gonna run out of daylight here soon if I don't keep going. Well, the cops are gone. No major incidents that I know of, so I don't know what the deal is. Let's see if I can get the lowdown on it, but yeah, I'm not sure. Oh well, while well, my aunt's out raking, Uncle Larry's out cutting grass or doing something, not really sure. Daisy's just chilling. And I'm all full. Let's go uh, spray some more weeds. Yep, he's weed whacking. I gotta run back in real quick. Uh, got a surprise that might be coming to the channel. Uh, I'm gonna meet with him real quick. I'm hoping to be doing a little bit of trials this year. Maybe trying a little bit of seed side by side and that's kind of where this comes in. So I'm gonna go meet, meet the gentleman and then we'll continue spraying. Look like I only got a two minute drive in. Well, that was fun. Appreciate you swinging by, Garrett. We'll see uh, We'll see if we can make something happen there, guys. Like I said, I'm a, I'm an engineer. I'm a I'm a nerd by trade, so I always like trying new things. And like I said, we might be able to try a couple seed varieties, kind of side by side. So time will tell. Let's get back to spraying. There's a raccoon or something right in the middle of the field. What in the heck is that? You guys, want to go take a look? Basically, straight ahead, right there. Yeah, I think that is a raccoon. No, well that could be a groundhog. I hate these things, I wish I had my gun on me. I mean my pew pew on me. But I might try and ram him over if I get a chance. It's chisel plowed ground, I'm pretty full so I can't move that quick. You're gonna die clown! As Adam Sandler once said. Where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? I don't think I got him. Nope, just missed him. I'm guessing he has a hole in there. Oh well, back to productivity. Dang it. Hate those things, they make a mess of the ground. Well, Daisy destroyed my... Uh, GoPro cover. Oh well. On the long rows now. Got the field outlined. Good to go. Good job, Daisy. 
Shouldn't have yelled at you, sorry dude. Man, these hills are gnarly. Gnarly, bro. That rye I killed, oh, two weeks ago though, had a nice kill on it. That first planted corn of the year is looking pretty good. A couple weeds in there that I don't love, but as it's not too bad. So I'm going in here to Cahill's. Got the last field done, got back 40 north all done. I'll roll on to this. Here's a pretty neat and tangible example of the power of uh, spray. So you guys remember in this video where I was actually spraying this with Roundup, all this was growing rye? Well, right here's the cutoff. You can kind of tell right there, those weeds kind of got burnt and then everything else up there got real smoked. Well, right here, these weeds at this spot did not get touched at all with Roundup and we got rag, ragweed growing everywhere. Literally, it's a straight cutoff right where that, uh, right where that's at. Pretty sweet. That's the power of a spray because if we don't control weeds, we will not have a crop to grow. We will not have a crop to harvest. And if we don't have a crop to harvest, nobody gets to eat. It's pretty important. That's why, you know, weeds and chemicals, they can be uh, very powerful, but they're very, uh, you know, they take a lot of responsibility to run. So you really can't, can't mess with them. You gotta know, know you gotta know what you're doing at least. And be smart about it. Yeah, and this is what could happen when you uh miss your eye. That could have been very bad if that was a lot of it. Let's give her a nice pump. So I am almost out of chemical. I got probably or product I should say, I got probably 70 gallons worth, so five acres worth. I do not have time to get another load in, I don't think. So with Roundup, it is a contact killer, and in order for contact killers to work, the plant needs to be alive and taking in sunlight. Because that's the difference between, there's really two modes of, there's two types of uh, killing modes that uh, chemicals have. One's a residual, so it just lays a blanket around the ground, and one's a contact killer. So Roundup is a contact killer, so the plant needs to be alive. So if I spray it at eight o'clock at night, and if we get a rain or a heavy dew the next morning, you can probably kiss that roundup and all that hard money that you spent away. Oh, wait. Well, I just got finished up. I am empty. I outlined this entire field, got the real bad spots in case we do get rained out for a day or two. At least, it at least knocks down the real bad spots. Real bad weedy spots are typically around your waterways. It's because that where, that's where greeds tip, weeds typically fester and you can't really kill them without going through your corn to get through some of the waterways. So that's just how the weeds kind of get there. So yeah, let's... uh. Head back to the tender and probably shut things down for the night. I got to, I might work on the sprayer for a little bit. Good job, corn dog. Get you some water. You haven't been much in a while. Tell you what though, I love the stand of what that corn corn is. It looks like it's right at V3, putting on its third third leaf. So I tried calling all three Hartung boys and no one answered because I'm kind of having second thoughts. I'm thinking I'm gonna keep spraying. So I can't spray any contact killers, but I got 100 acres down at Pat's place that need to be sprayed. That could be sprayed, I should say. And uh, like I said, they, I really wanna get that done before I, because I could do maintenance and stuff tomorrow on this thing. I don't need to do it right now. There's definitely some things that need to be fixed, but I could fix it when it rains tomorrow after it rains and it dries up. So I'm thinking about probably doing that, just gonna keep going. I'll probably be wrong once somebody calls and corrects me. Heading down to Pat's place. So I got basically 90 acres, I think that's what it is when I get down there. So I'll do this load and then I got like a half a load I'll do and try to get her sprayed out. There goes Curtis, he's heading down with the skid loader down to my farm. Pat just showed up. He's gonna be planting the first corn on ground that I own. That's pretty exciting. So he just got started and uh, Curtis is going down there with that skid loader to kind of flatten out those uh, tile mounds that, way, that they made fixing up that tile. That's why he's taking the skid loader down. I love overhanging the fence a little bit because it feels like you're playing chicken with the light post every single time. Woo! I hate it, but I think I'm on the right path. I think I'm good. But it's trying to kind of overhang into our fence a little bit. That fence that we haven't used in years so we probably should just rip out at some point. Overhang into there to try to get some of that grass down. Or at least hold the weeds back. Because weeds, once you get your field sprayed, if you have a proper chem program, the only way the weeds can get into your field is from the edges. The only way to control your fields from the edges is 
spray the edges. I don't think that guy is okay. Just a wild guess on that one, but I think it's going to be fertilizer. Tell you what, this has just been a beautiful field just to kind of sit back, enjoy the sunset, and just send it. You know, running that 15 mile an hour or so, 190 acres an hour. Just straight sending it. And I'm calling grandma because it's about time to eat. And I don't want to make her stay up too late. I still got another half a tank to run after this and then I'll clean some things out. As I'm going back and forth, I'm just doing some thinking. This sprayer has honestly been a real good sprayer. There's no wood in here. That's the biggest issue I have with it. Nah, I'm just kidding. I mean, really, we've put on a solid 1,000, 1,100 hours in the last four years since we've owned it. And we've had one line burst that emptied the drain, the whole hydraulic tank. Other than that, knock on wood, like I said, we've done nothing with this thing besides maintenance. I mean, this thing has been a dream for our first self-fulfilled sprayer. Let me turn real quick. Gotta get her nice and square best I can. That wasn't the greatest, but it'll work. I tightened up my uh, tolerance. I used to have a two gallon per acre rate, get tolerance between my rate. Now I just want one. Yeah, I mean, so we've spent, we this was a 2013 chassis. It sat, the farmer used it for like two, three years, and then it sat on the dealership for two years. So we bought it as a five-year-old sprayer, I believe. It had 604 hours on it or something like that. So when we bought it, we put the AIM Flex system on there. That's a Raven Hawkeye essentially on a case sprayer. And this thing has been awesome. Like really, yeah, we have, we put money into maintenance and the poppets don't last that long, but what they do is amazing. And as I've said it before, I mean, giving you that third uh, dimension to add to your pressure and your rate. I mean, it's just been an amazing system. Return compensation, individual nozzle, or almost individual row shut off or nozzle shut off. Speed range that's like 5x of what you would have on a normal sprayer. Turn around again. Need to get me some more mile long rows so that way I can enjoy and talk to you guys more. Because I'm not going to slow down. I need to, get, need to get acres covered. Doing this one handed is very hard. Arms getting tired. Yeah, I wish they also had a place to mount your GoPro. Case sprayers aren't really friendly to uh, farm tubers. But anyway, so we put the Inflex on them. We've spent probably a couple thousand in maintenance and different oils and stuff like that. We probably spent a couple thousand in spray parts for the Raven system. But other than that, this thing has been a dream. <coughs> it's made us a lot of money over the years or saved us money in the sense that we don't have to hire out our spraying. We can do it in a much more timely fashion. I mean, this thing's it's been a good sprayer. Really just can't complain. So now I'm just about out. And we'll head back and fill up one more time. There's Max. In his younger days, he would have sprayed after me. He's not so young anymore. There's Grandma working away in the garden. 91 years old, climbing a hill and spading, spading weeds. Quack grass, whatever she's doing. There goes Curtis heading back from my farm. Y'all, I can tell I'm getting empty and I'm getting real close. I want to run out right at the end, ideally. Well, I'm not gonna. Crap. I got maybe half an acre left. Yeah, literally have this much. Crap. Yeah, that cat is not okay. How did it die over here? I'm gonna go get it out of the field. That'll be you if you ever make me mad, dog. Like right now. I'm supposed to be chewing on that. Hope you paid attention. That'll be you. I'm just kidding. I want my easy go. Man. Another guy didn't make it. I am just an awful person today. So I'm got some flags right now. I'm out marking. We're essentially Curtis vertical tilled. It's not a very scientific experiment, but. What I'm trying to see is when we come and harvest this or when we scout this, this little patch, is it going to yield more than the other stuff? I think the emergence is a lot better. And if you got good emergence, that means you're on a good start to uh, a healthy bean crop. 
So you can kind of tell right here is where, well, it's hard for you guys to tell in the camera, but it's a little darker right here. I can just tell that he uh, vertical tilled, not vertical tilled. See, like in this spot, you can't even see if there's beans coming up or not just because there's so much residue. But right here is the line where he vertical tilled. If you look, there's lots of beans you can see up. Right here, you can barely see any. I don't know, I think it'll be a big difference. Our beans are coming up though, that's good. I'm gonna head back, grab me some hamburgers, and call our night, come back up here tomorrow. We're supposed to get some rain, so we'll see how long it lasts, or how much we get, but if we're good, so I'm gonna come up here tomorrow and do some maintenance, because there's always plenty to do. Hey, DZ. I'm gonna make this a late night. So, Nathan needs fuel up in Bellevue, so Curtis is gonna have to bring him fuel. So because of that, I am just gonna ride up with Curtis because we have a pickup up there. I'm gonna go ahead and just ride up with him and take that pickup back. Big dogs. Big dogs. <laughs> she wants them to play. Daisy, no, that you will go right in the poop. Whew, hi. For saying it was gonna be a terrible day, it actually was a pretty decent day. I will take it. It was, uh, oh, I got 200 acres done and I got 100 of those 200 acres done in the last hour and a half of a day. That's just how choppy and rough that ground is, some of the ground that we farm. So it is what it is. We are going to Vamoose, head out and scram. So thank you guys so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully we're gonna be closing in on getting finished with up a planting potentially by Sunday. We'll see. Nathan's gonna finish up with our beans tonight with any luck. That's why Curtis brought him fuel and then uh, we'll see. Yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, stay safe, and Daisy, close us out. She's too busy. Ta-ta for now.